What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and Jocelyn and I are doing a little camping today in Central California coast. Really nice area of California. I think most of you would agree when I say that fishing is hard. Or at least catching fish is hard. But today I'm going to show you the easiest way to catch fish, the easiest method, and the most effective, also the cheapest. If you're familiar with Bay Area fishing, you've definitely seen this before. It's the poke pole, all right? And this costs almost nothing. And you can make it on your own super easily. And so this video is mainly for, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the poke pole. We do a lot of poke poling and it's really the best way to catch fish or the easiest way to catch fish. I wouldn't say it's the best way to catch fish, but it's definitely the easiest way to catch fish in my opinion. Um, I'm pretty successful with it pretty much every trip. This right here is uh, just a stick. This is actually from a gardening tool. It's like uh, those things that you plant with your tomatoes and then the tomato vines grow on the pole and then it supports the tomatoes, you know, you know, one of those gardening things. And Jocelyn bought a bunch of them, so I turned a few of them into poke poles. So I have that, and then on the tip, it's just a coat hanger that's just wrapped around, and I just taped it up. That's it. And then, on the tip of that, I made a loop and secured a snap swivel at the end. And to tip it off with a hook, that's it. This is an octopus right here, a tentacle. And usually I use squid for poke poling, and it's really effective. Squid works really well, but I think octopus will work just as good. I just had some in my freezer, so why not, right? Now I'm gonna use one of these pieces. Just throw it on the hook. All right, well, let's get going. Jocelyn's already out there trying to catch some fish. most important things when it comes to poke pulling is the tide. You want to go out there when it's a low tide, preferably a negative tide. Today is a negative one. Something took your bait? Probably. Jocelyn had a bite. Because a negative tide allows you to access the spots uh, where you normally wouldn't be able to. Like if it was if it was high tide right now, I couldn't be here. I couldn't be fishing under this rock. So when you're searching for a poke pole spot, you wanna look for an area where the rocks kinda of extend out into the ocean. And these are gonna be the best places and the most fishiest places for poke poling. Most of the times what you're gonna catch is a monkey face prickleback. It's not just eels that you catch with this. You can also catch rockfish a lot of the times as well. When you're poke pulling, these fish tend to bite pretty quick. I just had a bite right now. Came off, he just took it. I'm gonna try with this tiny piece of bait. Let's see if he still wants some of this. And I just barely put it in. So when it comes to poke pulling, I leave it only for about a minute or two. Here we go, there it is. There it is. See that? Boom. Yeah, I got one. That's a good, yeah, that's a, that's a nice, perfect size. No, no. Yeah. So that first one got away, came off the hook, and once they come off the hook, they're gone, man. Don't even try to grab them, because <laughs> uh, you'll get messed up. I had a monkey face prickleback incident. Back when I first began my video, there was a really... So once you catch one of these, you want to have a bucket ready to go right there. Just put them in the bucket right away because they will come off just like that. But you know what? I'm not even worried about it because I know I'm going to catch more easily and probably in that same hole. Let's see. So usually if I get a bite in one hole, one spot, then I'll put it back in that same spot again and see if there's another one in there because most likely there will be another one. Let's 
See? Got another one. Same spot. I'm gonna put them inside the bucket and release the hook. Boom, there it is. Monkey face prickle back. So these guys are not actually eels. They are a species of ground fish, which is uh, related to like rockfish. You can catch rockfish as well. I've even caught cabazon poke pulling. I wonder if one day I could catch a lingcod poke pulling. That would be cool. I'm gonna make that my goal. I don't know if I'll do it today, but I'm gonna make it happen one day. So let me show you what that hole looked like where I caught those first two. So this is the rock right here and I had stuck it right under there. There might even be another one, so let's, let's, let's get in there. There was one there. I don't know, hopefully the GoPro caught that. But there was definitely another one. There it is, there it is. Oh, dang, again? What is that? Came off. There it is. There it is. Oh, it came off. Yeah. But that was the third one in the same exact hole. Oh, another one. Dude, there was another one, right? Hopefully the GoPro caught that because I definitely had a lot of bites. Same exact rock as the first two. That's how easy poke pulling is. If you go at the right time and if you poke in the right hole. <laughs> if you talk about holes too much. So I'm using octopus today, but squid is just as effective. So no need to get any octopus, just squid is much easier to find. Oh, there we go. It's a, it's a monkey face, break a back. This guy's pretty small. Oh, I see it. All right. Oh, we'll keep this guy for now. There we go. I'm just gonna keep these guys for now in the bucket. And if I catch a better size one, then I'll let the smaller ones go and then choose which one I want to keep. Got another one. Got one here. Well, there it is. Guys, I'm telling you, poke pulling is so easy. It's the easiest way to catch fish. Oh, and by the way, guys, so last video, I showed you guys, I got my new uh, felt bottom shoes and uh, I had a few comments saying that they're actually banned. Felt bottom shoes are banned in some states. Uh, they banned them because they can potentially harbor invasive species uh, in that material. So we're fine here in California on the coast, but if you're transferring from freshwater to freshwater, different places, even in the same state, they can potentially uh, transfer invasive species. So that's why some places will ban felt bottom shoes. Yeah, thank you guys for that, for that comment. Let's see if she catch one here. Oh, she says she got something. Oh, no, we're stuck. Stuck. He's stuck too. He's on my thing. Maybe he's big. Maybe it's the lingcod you wanted. <laughs> the lingcod? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could be a rockfish. What they do is they'll expand their spine. Oh, I so they'll, that. so yeah, so it, so it feels like you, you get snagged. Yeah. Just like when you're fishing. Came off. If I let the let the pole go in further, he would pull back on it to try to get in further into the rock. And then, but there was one spot, like just wouldn't budge. The lighting right now is so nice. Look at that. All right, well, we just got back to camp. Man, poke pulling is pretty fun. It's really good. You guys should try it out if you've never done it. We only caught the monkey face eels today, but you can catch rockfish with it too. Anyways. Uh, I'm gonna fillet these eels and we're gonna do it unagi style today. Unagi. <laughs> yeah. The best way to do this is actually to get a nail and hammer their head into the board. Well, this is my brand new board. This is an expensive board, man. So um, I'm not gonna do that to this board. At least not yet. All right, here we go. Let's start. I already did that one. 
I do have to adjust my technique a little bit since I don't have that nail in. But yeah, so I'm just going cut there and then boom. The tip to about right there. Right there. So it doesn't puncture the guts, but it cuts through that rib cage. So notice that the technique, the way I hold my knife there. Holding the yield here and the knife at the same time. So I'm pushing the two together, sort of. And that gives me control of the knife and control of the eel as well. I'm just gonna take my time with it. No rush. So you wanna be careful with the guts here because they do smell if you puncture it. But if you manage to get it out without puncturing it, you're golden. Just like that. I'm gonna peel it out and then cut the front too. Boom, there's the guts. Now, I'm gonna, I need to take the spine out. Go through the spine. Messed up the end. Hmm. It's actually really hard without a nail. Let's try this. Oh no, you're cutting board. Don't do it. Just a little bit, it's fine. Ah. I have to put it in there. It's really hard without it. Can you actually hold it? I didn't do my nails. It's okay. That now that I can you know pull on it like this it's mm -hmm. much it's much easier yeah the nail really it really does make a difference so here we go here's the guts boom 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 take that out now I'm gonna actually cut ready boom I'm gonna cut through the bones here cutting through the bones just cutting the spine out You just want to make sure you get the bones on this side, on the top side. The bottom side, don't worry about it, we can take that off after. A real like unagi, unagi and anago, their bones are much, uh, much thinner so you can eat them. But these guys are a little bit thicker. So now I'm going to just take the bone, there's bone on, on this side. And there's also the fin, right? You see the fin there. I'm going to take that out. I don't need this knife anymore. Now, just taking the bones on the top off. Hold on to that piece there. Boom, see that? Just gonna pull, pull and slide the knife. There it is. And there's a little bit of bone here, the rib cage. I'll take that off too. And it only goes like halfway down. There you go. That's all clean. And now I'm gonna boil some water and we're gonna blanch the skin. Actually, I kinda wanna take this fin off too. So they have that fin on the bottom too, right? That, the anal fin. There you go. That's it. Now I'm grilling the bones right now. And we're gonna use that for the sauce. Look at that sunset. It's so pink. It's very pink. All right, so I got some hot water here. Boom. Now, I'm just gonna pour it right on the skin. You can see that layer of slime, right? You could take that right off. And just clean it up. If you leave that on there, it's gonna be kinda, it's gonna taste bad. All right, guys, we're ready to grill. All right, we got some hot coals here. So we're just gonna lay them on. So traditionally the way um, in Japan or the way they cook the eel is they grill it first, then they steam it, and then grill it again with the sauce. 
So I think that's what we're going to try today. Right, this is looking pretty good. I got the steam going right here. So we're gonna transfer that and steam these guys. I was thinking how am I gonna do this? I think I could just go like this and cover it up. And that should get hit by the steam enough. I think I'll wrap it with uh, foil. All right, so that should prevent the steam from coming out too much. I got the rice washed and ready to go. Try it on the coals. Should cook fine. I think about a cup of soy sauce. This is Marin. This is a sweet cooking wine. Maybe 10% of Marin. Also gonna add just, uh, two tablespoons of brown sugar. And I also have these grilled bones. We're gonna put it right into the sauce. And that is gonna add some flavor as well oh there we go the rice is going lower the heat on the rice there we go now that's on low heat this is going to be the unagi sauce here you don't want it to boil too much or else it's going to burn so i put the rice on the stove and then put the big pot in here Might need a little more sugar. Add a little more sugar. I remember making like a big pot of this unagi sauce. We make a huge pot of it and then I would have to just stand there, stir it like this on the stove and not let it boil. And as soon as it started boiling like this, it started bubbling like that, I had to turn the heat off. Mm because you don't want to burn it at all. And I had to do that like, I don't know, 20 times. Let it cool back down and do it again. For unagi sauce, you have to reduce it about 60%. It needs to be pretty thick, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is almost 50% reduced. Once there's like a nice layer of sauce on the spoon, once you dip it, then it's pretty done. And this one's right about there. The steaming is done. We steamed it for about 30 minutes. There it is. Oh yeah. That's looking good. Alright guys, that's done. Look at that beauty. Whoo! That is glistening. So here I have the Unagi Donburi. Check this out guys. Oh yeah, that is looking beautiful. All right, here, let me open your beer for you. Oh, thank you. There you go. And I have my 10 barrel. Ah. 10 barrel brewing. Chopsticks. Apocalypse IPA. This one is uh, on the bottom. It says, drink beer outside. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Come bye. Good day. Itadakimasu. Yeah, this looks so good. And we're gonna put a little sancho pepper on there too. What's sancho pepper? Sancho pepper. It's just like a type of pepper that uh, has a um, bit of a, what do you call it? Almost like a Szechuan type of spiciness. Mm. Goes really well with anago too. 
So I'm gonna put sprinkle that on there. More sauce. More sauce, of course. Yeah, look how much it thickened up. There it is, look at that. Ooh, yeah. I'm pretty excited to try this. Mm. Haven't had this in a while. First bite. So normally with unagi, they steam it for like up to an hour. But since unagi has nice fat on it, mm -hmm. It doesn't dry out. But this one... Did it dry out? On the tips, it dried out a bit. There's no, there's not much fat on it at all. So that's, that's problem number one. Tastes really good. Um, mainly, you get the clear flavor of the sauce, right? And the sauce is amazing. Yeah, um, I say that in every video, but mm -hmm. your sauces are always really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tastes really good, but the problem is, it has, has no fat, so it it's not that tender unagi that's normally that you normally get. I did the same thing last year, but I made sushi with it, and that time I only grilled it. It was really good, mm. and I think it was still like kind of fluffy. Um, this one feels a little, little overcooked because of the steaming. I think you can skip that steaming step. I think just uh, just grilling normally is okay. I think the sauce is better this time. Mm-hmm. Sauce is perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this camping episode, we're actually making a video for our second channel, Tackling the World. If you guys want to check it out, go check it out on Tackling the World, our second channel. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching as always. See you guys next time. Peace.